Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be looking at a brand new product. Well, not brand new product, version 2 of a product. It's going to be Garage Therapy Snow Foam V2. Straight off the bat you're probably thinking, damn mate, you're eager buying a 5 litre tub of a snow foam that's not really been tested yet. But it has been tested. I was very fortunate to be somebody who was asked to test some of the different versions of V2 during its production. However, this is going to be the first time that I've used the final version of V2 and I brought out all the big guns to do my testing on this. As you can see behind me, I've got a car that's ceramic coated which should be the easiest to clean. Then I've got a car that was recently polished, had the garage therapy wax and then Sigma V2 applied on top of it. And finally, I've got a car that's not been washed for about three or four months and the last time it was washed had the Infinity Wax Graphene Wax applied to it. Now, when I applied the Graphene Wax, it started raining, it didn't get a full cure time, so it's probably not held up too well. So that's probably the dirtiest of the cars. Let's get on with the testing. All right, so how am I going to test this? Like I said earlier, I've got three different vehicles with three different protection levels. I've got two snow foam lances, I've actually got more than that, but I'm going to use two. I've got a KDN lance, which I really like, which is what I used when I used version 1. And I've also got the MJJC lance. I'm going to put the 75 to 425 ml of water recommended dilution ratio, which is the middle of the road for medium cleaning, into both lances. And then I'm going to just do the tried and tested swipe test method to see how much dirt is removed from each vehicle before diving a little bit more in depth about the products and different ways to use the products. I think it's pretty safe to say that GT1 Snow Foam V2 passed the first test on the ceramic coated car without any, any hiccups at all. However, we're now on to what I would say is the second dirtiest car, which is the BMW X1, which if you remember, has got the garage therapy wax topped up with V2 Sigma on it. Let's have a quick look at how dirty it is and then we'll go on with test number two. So this is certainly much dirtier than the other car. Let's try and get the other angle. Most of the dirt is at the front, but it is still dirty at the back as well, and along the side skirt.
Now, I'm not going to lie there. I'm very surprised by that result. I didn't think that it was going to do as much work as what it's done there. I know the car's recently been protected, but for this being a maintenance wash product, that being the probably the level of dirt that you're going to accrue throughout the winter for a maintenance wash, I've got to say I'm impressed. X3's in. This is probably doesn't look the dirtiest car out of the three, but the fact that it's not been washed in around about three months probably makes it the toughest dirt to get rid of. Let's have a quick look at it. So again, much like the X1, you can see that level of grime that's been built up along the sill. However, it's much more consistent on the X3 than along the side skirt as well. Let's carry out the exact same test. All things considered, with how long it's been since the X3's had a wash, along with the protection, which is probably getting towards the end of its lifespan, I'm happy enough that that's removed enough dirt for me to go in and do a contact wash with. But if you're not happy enough, there are other ways to apply this product. But first, let's have a look at this. You can see here that I've got Garage Therapy V1 and V2 of the snow foam. And I will admit, V2 is definitely a thinner product than V1. Not excessively thin, as you would have just seen with how thick the MJJC was still putting it on there. It's still a very good consistency foam. But let's see how they compare to each other in a side by side. Let's see if the dwell time of that V1 really is as long as what some people think it is. Here with V1 and the MJJC lens, you can already see that line of separation. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, go and have a look at GM Details video on the V1 of this soap foam. He explains it really well. But you can see where the line is. You can see it falling off the car much quicker than V2. So, I mean, in my eyes, it looks like V2 is probably going to hang around for a little bit longer when used through the MJJC lens. As well as wetting and proving already that it cleans. I would say it's a definite improvement so far. Hi 
that's just coming up on four minutes. I think through the MJJC lance, the point's proven that V2s are better well informed than V1. I'm going to rinse this off and I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other lance. Alright, so for MD Wonder, those dilution rates were exactly the same for the V1 and the V2. 75ml of product to 425ml of water. I scaled it down for the V1 because I knew I wasn't going to be using as much. And then I used the solution that I've been using earlier on of the V2. And in my opinion, V2 has a better dwell time than V1. It's been proven there. Next thing I'm going to do, we've turned the car around. So we've got a nice dirty side again. This was the car that, what, what I would say, the foam performed the worst on. So, you think to yourself, right, I maybe need a bit of a stronger dilution. But I've already made up my foam bottle. So what's the other ways that we can think about doing this? Let's whip up a 4% PIR solution, text messages, in a trigger sprayer. And see how that copes with that kind of level of grime and dirt. Oh. So what does 4% look like in a trigger sprayer or pump sprayer? Essentially what it is, is 20ml worth of product to every 500ml worth of water or 4ml worth of product to every 10ml worth of water. So let's get that topped up, get it on the car, see how it does. Try to play it, but you're never gonna beat me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody and stain from the people who... Oh, right, so that's on there I'm Gonna give it a few minutes to dwell Or until it starts to look as if it's drying out Sun has come out a little bit, so the temperatures are up a wee bit Not much, but a little bit and Then we'll just see I'm only going to do a swipe afterwards to see what kind of level of dirt is taken off But I've left the driver's door dirty I'm not going to pressure wash that and then hopefully we can get a nice wee comparison between the two doors. This is us sitting at around about three minutes now. You can see it's definitely still wet on the panel. But it is looking a bit thinly spread so I'm just going to rinse it off and then we can have a wee comparison. I don't know if it's coming across in camera, but I can see a noticeable difference in the dirt level on the rear door and on the front door. So I would be happy enough to go in with a contact wash at that. That really sums up my testing of this product for today. I know you can go into the depths of using it at the 50ml, the 75 the 100 all the different dilution rates, but let's be honest, nobody wants to sit and watch a half an hour or an hour long video of me doing that to a car and or testing a product that way. There's other people that's going to come along and review this product, so I'm sure you're going to see it in many different dilutions and many diff used in many different ways. In my opinion, I think it's a good product. I think it does what the title says and is it the best snow foam that I've ever used? It's certainly up there. I still like a little bit more dwell time. I do. V1 was never renowned for its long dwell time. You know, it's, it's not squid ink alka froth. It's not a wax planet 8 below type foam that is going to hang about on your paintwork for 15 minutes or so if you want it to. This is a get it on, let it do its thing and get it off product. Similar dwell times to Bill Hammer Auto Foam but with that added thickness and having to use less product. Now people will probably say that I'm biased because I tested the product and helped with the development of it. And to be honest, I don't really care what those people say because at the end of the day, this is a good product. And if I was recommending you to buy it, if you can afford it, I would buy the five litres of it because the five litres, I think it's 35 pounds. If you're going to use this regularly, works out an awful lot cheaper 
than buying one litre of it and continually using one litre, buying another litre, buying another litre. So, I would definitely suggest that anybody thinking about trying this product gets himself a bottle and tries it. I'm very happy with it. Certainly going to become a staple part of my arsenal for the next few months, especially over winter, where you just want to get out, get the car washed, not have to worry about, you know, taking your time doing it. You just want your quick five minutes worth of dwell time, rinse it off, and then that's you, good to go. So, I'm going to wrap it up there. I feel like I've been rambling on for ages now. I do hope that you've enjoyed the video. I hope it's been helpful, I hope it's been beneficial to you. And, as always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next one.